Chatelet Bridge Burners. Today, I wanted to talk about my favorite author and my favorite book. And I mentioned this a few times. I mentioned the author anyway. And I have another video where I read a passage from one of his books. And I really like it. And he has tons of quote worthy stuff. And this guy is a fucking man. And that's why I like him. And all his books, every single one that I've read, um, has inspired me. Like, greatly, 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 greatly. And I'm not going to go into too much detail because there's so much to say. And he has so many awesome quotes and awesome passages. So many. Like, the, the passage that I read in the other video, I just opened the book up and I found it. And it was perfect. It, it even, even relates to, well, whatever. They all relate to us, I think. So, my favorite author is David Gemmel. And my favorite book is Waylander. And a bit of backstory. I was talking about this in a Howard Dare stream. Because I was on a Howard Dare live stream. With a bunch of other people. <laughs> no, he didn't invite me or anything like that. I just fucking jumped in like everybody else, you know. But we we're talking about this stuff. And... I mentioned, I talked about it again another time too, and I think, I'm not going to say it's sad, but a lot of people don't read, and they see reading as a waste of time. Actually, they see everything as a waste of time, except for, you know, fucking bitching about shit on the internet. So, alright, well, if you don't think reading is a waste of time, and if you're willing to, I don't know, get inspired, then I recommend you check out David Gamble. And the thing I really like about him is that he's not a typical fantasy author. He has accountability. He has real life experience. He knows how to fight in real life. So many of these other authors, you know, uh, there's going to be a conflict. And then when it comes to the point of resolution, like the issue is going to resolve itself by some magical means and some far off wizard casting a spell that nobody knew about or someone had some ability that nobody knew about. Not this guy. This guy is just fucking fists. Alright, and that's what's fucking sick about it. And when he was a little kid, like a lot of authors, he was a bookworm. And he used to get beat up because he was son to a single mom. And the people used to call his mom a whore. And they used to beat the shit out of him. And then, you know, his mom fucked a lot of men. So she kind of was a whore. But one day, she started dating a, a blue collared guy and for some reason he cared about her and he cared he learned to care about her son and he saw the kid fucking was miserable and was an egg-headed kid getting fucking beaten up and tortured and one night the kid had a nightmare you know the young author and he ran into his parents bedroom crying screaming and you know, his mom's new boyfriend said, what's the problem? And he said, there's a vampire in my closet. There was a vampire in my closet. And he says, don't worry. I fixed him. I broke his neck. Because I can't have vampires running around my house. And that's the type of man he was. And the next day, he says, come with me. He says, where are we going? And he says, I'm going to teach you something. He says, you taking me to the library? He says, no, no, no. I'm not taking you to the library. He took him to the boxing gym. And he says, you're going to learn how to defend yourself. And he did. And he learned how to box. And he learned how to defend himself against the bullies. And he learned a lot of other shit too. And that's why I like him. Because all the stories talk about accountability. All the stories talk about facing your problems head on. There's no running away. You can't fucking hide behind walls. You can't bury your head in a book. You can't even bury yourself in MGTOW content. Alright? You have to fucking go. You have to learn how to fight. You have to fucking tackle your fucking shit head on. If you don't want to tackle it head on, if you're not a fucking brawler, that's fine. Be a fucking sniper. But tackle your shit. Don't don't just sit on the sidelines. And I'm going to read you the, uh, the opening passage here. Well, the introduction to Waylander. In 1985, I was appointed editor of the Folkestone Herald newspaper on the south coast of England. It was a poison chalice. Sales were slumping alarmingly, and the staff were demoralized, and a rival newspaper seemed to bury us. 
the rival had been launched by a group called the Kent Messenger, better known locally as KM Group. I was then about to start on the third Drenai novel, but I had no plot. It was also hard to think of one while battling to save a newspaper from extinction. One night, as I sat in my office, writing the fourth draft of a not very good opening, I leaned back and thought, damn it Dave, the newspaper war is more interesting than this. That's when it hit me. If I wrote the newspaper war as a fantasy, it would be fun, and it would also help with morale. The enemy would be Kayim, or KM, the heroes based on the people who worked for me. My deputy, Shane Jarvis, became Sarvaj. The chief sub-editor, Jonathan Poor, was Jonat. Fired with enthusiasm, I plotted out a basic storyline, gradually increasing the list of characters until I included just about everyone, all the way up to the chairman. He was a colossal and charismatic figure named Robert Breer. Back in 1976, he had been captain of the Cambridge Boat Race crew, and he was now an entrepreneur. He had a management style which was colorful and the stuff of legends. Once I saw him walk out into the compositioning room and get into an argument with one of the workers, suddenly Robert offered to settle the argument by arm wrestling. He dropped to the floor and took up his position. The surprised worker grinned and took him on. All the other workers stood around cheering and shouting, Robert lost. Gotta be best out of three, he shouted, and the match continued. Robert lost and yet gained enormously. People loved working for him. He was a one-off, the kind of man who, if he'd been general, could have led his troops into the jaws of hell. They'd have followed him gladly. Robert became Karnak the One-Eyed, the legendary general who had carried a whole dross per all against the might of the Vagrians. And yet the story did not gel. I couldn't start the novel. Something was missing. I was given, giving a talk to a group of writers around then, and I was explaining how the underlying pace of the story had to be carefully established. It is important because the correct pacing allows a writer to inject tension or atmosphere by either an increase or decrease in the underlying pace. Set the initial pace too fast, and the story will run at breakneck speed, with no opportunity to allow the reader to pause for breath. It also then becomes harder to lift the action. <clears throat> Give us an example of setting the pace too fast, said one of the writers. I had to think quickly and I said, they had begun to torture the priest when a stranger stepped from the shadows of the trees. In the silence that followed, I pointed out that such an opening would set a blistering pace and that it would be nigh impossible to slow the story down thereafter. As I drove home, I found myself thinking about the sentence. Why were they torturing the priest? Who was a stranger? There was only one way to find out. I started the book with that sentence and discovered Waylander, the Slayer. The novel was published in 1986 and, like the other Jernai stories, has never been out of print since. Happily, the real-life story also ended well. The Folkestone Herald saw off the KM interlopers. Sales rose and staff morale soared. It was, in so many ways, a happy time. I have no idea where Robert Breer is now, but I'll bet he hasn't forgotten how to arm wrestle. And... That's the introduction to Waylander. And that's one of the reasons I like the author. I love the author, he's my favorite author. And his books have made me not only look deep inside myself, but given me the much needed kick in the ass that I've needed on so many occasions. And uh, his books will make you cry, but at the same time, they'll urge you to go out and destroy and I don't mean like you know what I mean I urge you to go out and fucking kill it and shred the gnar and to live your fucking life so do yourselves a favor check out Waylander by David Gemmel or any other book by David Gemmel and I guarantee you will not be disappointed let me know what you think if you guys read let me know what you like to read leave a thought in the comments downstairs like share subscribe have a great day you're watching Bridge Burners TV Chatelet